we're just going to carefully lower this into the water. Oh, it slammed off of that rock. <laughs> and it's in that puddle right there. <laughs> I wasn't too careful. Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. That little black box that bounced off of that rock and down into the creek, which is actually right down below my property right there, was, was one of these. It's a Poseidon. It is a ruggedized device charger made by a company called Dark Energy. Now, Dark Energy contacted me. They watched some of my videos, and they thought that I would be a, a good guy to try to put these through tests, not just to see if they survive what they claim, because they do. I'll jump to the punchline. These Poseidons do everything that Dark Energy claims they'll do, survive everything that Dark Energy claims they will survive. But they wanted to see how far we could push them. And that's what's coming up next on Twang and Bang. The Poseidon is a destruction tested portable charger and light from a company called Dark Energy. It's designed to provide power for your electronic devices in environments that an ordinary charger wouldn't survive. The battery provides 10,000 milliamp hours of power through two charging ports. One is rated at 2.4 amps and the other at 1 amp for a total output of 3.4 amps. A locking cover not only protects the ports from damage, but the sculpted rubber gasket keeps out dust as well as water even when submerged. A built-in LED flashlight is also programmed to repeatedly signal SOS, and since the LED draws very little power, the SOS signal can last for many hours. Four colored LEDs provide the charge status with a push of a button or any time the Poseidon is in use. A red LED flashes to warn you once the stored power has dropped below 10%, though it is safe to fully discharge a Poseidon. The case is available in black as well as real tree brown with day glow orange accents. Each Poseidon comes with a water resistant mini USB cable that's wrapped in 20 feet of paracord. The paracord protects the cable when packed and during use, but the cord can be harvested in an emergency without affecting the performance of the cable itself. The Poseidon charges from any USB power source in approximately 6 hours. Likewise, it can power or charge any device that uses a USB cable for power, and both ports can be used to charge devices at the same time. The Poseidon is the first patented device charger that has an IP rating of 68. It's the highest you can get. It stands for ingress protection. Six is the highest rating you can get for dust ingress. And eight is the highest you could get for water. We're going to test both at the same time. We've been getting a ton of rain here in North Carolina. And the creek running behind our property is very, very silted. The ingress protection for water is three feet one meter for, I don't know, some half hour or something like that. But we're going to stick it into silty water for a little bit longer than that and see how it does. I don't think it's going to have any problem. We're just going to carefully lower this into the water. Oh, it slammed off of that rock. <laughs> and it's in that puddle right there. <laughs> I wasn't too careful. Well, we're just going to let that cook for a bit, come back in a couple hours and see how it did. We're just going to carefully lower this into the water. Oh, it slammed off of that rock. Any battery that can drop 20 feet onto a rock and still stay watertight is exceeding my expectations. But while this Poseidon is soaking, I'm going to put another one through a little more severe physical abuse. You aren't likely to run over a device charger without running over a lot of other gear in the process, but I thought this would be a really neat test to do anyway. Admittedly, the soil in our neighborhood is quite sandy, but I still think this test will definitively show that the Poseidon can handle the crushing forces at the bottom of a heavy pack and then some. <laughs> that is flattened. Looks okay. <laughs> Power's up. Looks fine. The U.S. military standard 810G rating for drop test maxes out at a six foot drop onto a hard flat surface. This would likely destroy most standard device chargers, but let's see what the Poseidon can do. I think this would be a good way to get some of the sand out of the nooks and crannies that got ground into it. We're going to start with about a six foot height, which is what it's rated for. Oh, that bounced. That totally bounced.
No problems. Okay. <laughs> now we're going to do a little bit more. And try to get more of a flat hit now. Well, now we're going to do something more drastic. Oh, <laughs> that hit, that belly flapped. We got our belly flap that time. Whoa! Woo! <laughs> that turned on the LED. I can see the LED got turned on. Might have hit the button. Well, we know the LED still works. The port cover still works. Turn the LED off. Power's up. We're going to see if it charges. This slow motion footage shows the impact bumpers at work. The Poseidon hit with a thud and not a crack, then bounced into a cartwheel. The bumpers are not big enough to protect the case from face on impact, but the Poseidon holds together even from this belly flop after being tossed 30 feet into the air. The port cover is vulnerable to these types of impact, but I'm not sure how you could design it otherwise. So you can see it, it still powers up. I think the, the damage is all cosmetic. It's just on the corners of the case, the plastic part of the case. The rubber bumpers are, well, they're some kind of polymer are a little scuffed, but that's it. The port cover doesn't seem to be damaged. It still works just fine. All the ports look okay. The LED, that works. <laughs> we knew that. Okay, let's see if I could charge up a phone off of this. Make sure that the ports actually work. Yep. It's charging. So, so far so good. That port works. I'm pull this out. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of glare, but the battery symbol came up and it's charging. Okay, so that's a pretty good impact test. After heading home to grab some lunch, I figured it was time to check on the Poseidon soaking in the creek. Okay, it's been almost three hours. I don't expect that to be uh, a challenge for this at all, but I just wanted to do this test anyway. Let's see. I didn't get a lot of depth out of this. The, this creek, when it's, when it's three feet deep, it's ripping through here and there's no way. This will be just flapping like a flag in the wind. And uh, looks good so far, it just looks wet. <laughs> and it survived the fall, no problem. Powers up, no problem. Let's take this to the truck, dry it off, and we'll see how this stands up to a charge test. <laughs> we'll dry this off. I don't want any water getting into the ports when I open a port cover. That's really the thing. As long as this port cover stays closed, there's just no way water's gonna get in this case because the, the port covers, <laughs> they're, they're cranked on there, but, um, and they did, they did warn me that I would see water between outer plastic of the port cover and the plastic around the ports, but these port covers actually insert into the spots and the ports and everything looks super dry. I'm going to dry the, the surface off as well, just, just so I don't push water in there while I do this test. And now let's get a power cord and my phone and yep, looking good. Oh, I got another follower on Instagram. How about that? <laughs> Good news all around. All right, that, that, that doesn't surprise me one bit, but I just wanted to test it because they make that claim and, and I could have left it there who knows how long. It could have been growing mollusks, freshwater mollusks, and uh, <laughs> it probably still would work. Now to get back to seeing how much abuse the Poseidon can take beyond what dark energy claims. I'm out of the shooting range that has a really long 
rough gravel road. And so I'm going to drag this behind from the gate where I'm starting all the way to where I'm going to be parking at the range. And we're just going to see what happens to this. Hopefully, I think it's going to stay on here. I think it's actually going to be fine. It's already pretty scuffed up from the impact testing I've already done. I think it's possible that the port cover might get pulled off from impact, <laughs> but we'll just have to see. I mounted a Replay XD on my rear bumper to get this slow motion footage of the Poseidon bouncing around at 15 miles per hour. In order to get it on camera, I tied it close enough that I could not see any of this through my mirrors while I was driving. If I did, I probably would have stopped a lot sooner to see how it was doing. Clearly, this charger is experiencing a massive number of hard impacts, and the whole test lasted over 5 minutes. I doubt you'd be able to even find a charger after you bounce it down a cliffside for 5 minutes, let alone expect it to work, but I was certainly hopeful the Poseidon would survive this. <laughs> Oh man, it looks rough. Wow, yep, that did a number on it, cosmetically at least. Oh, it powers up. Let's put it on the tailgate and see if it still works. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Yep, powers up, but uh, <laughs> Something I didn't notice before, the port cover's missing. So just like I thought that that might get opened, it actually got completely ripped off. You can see where it, it broke off the case there and there. Um, and the button for the LED, the LED doesn't work anymore. So we're just gonna see if these ports work to see if it's just cosmetic damage or, or worse. Get my phone out here. Oh, we might have killed it. Yeah, that was too much. And, uh, you know, I, I did so much to this before that test. And you're not going to be expecting something to survive getting dragged behind a truck at 15 miles an hour for a mile and a half. And like I said, I can't wait to see what the footage looks like. Um, but yeah, that was too much for it. That's the, the battery itself is okay, but the connection between the battery and the ports somehow got, got damaged. So I can feel it's a little crunchy going in there. <laughs> I don't consider that a fail. <laughs> They asked me to do it just to see because nobody's ever done that before. Uh, <laughs> but I have another one, the one that I've been water testing. And I'm going to do one more test to see <laughs> how tough these really are. This is my Wilson Combat Standard. It's based on a Remington 870. It is not a standard shotgun by <laughs> any stretch of the imagination, though. I'm going to be shooting number eight bird shot at the battery. It's on the berm about 15 yards over my shoulder. Dark Energy actually did this test, but they did have to pry the ports a little bit to get them to, to work. I had the ports covered a little bit more than I think they had for their test. They're not selling it as something that can survive this. They're not selling this as something that can actually survive getting hit by buckshot or a slug, which I think would just demolish it. But let's see what we can do from 15 yards with bird shot. I don't have my contacts in, so I can't see what happened. I gotta, I gotta switch to my glasses. Wow, okay, so I hit it. You can see all the pellet holes all around it. And there's definitely pellet marks on the case, but looks like the port is okay. Yeah, let's, let's see. Let's go get this cleaned up on the tailgate and see if it still works. I think it's going to. So get this plugged in. Get it 
plugged into my phone and yay, it still works. Let's check the other port. It does. So uh, it's tough enough to get hit by birdshot and gosh, that's gotta be at least 15, 20 pellets that hit it. Okay. I'm going to step this up a notch. Let's do buckshot. Let's just do it. <laughs> okay, like I said, I do not think this is going to survive this, but I'm going to shoot number four buck. This is a magnum load. This is what I use for home defense. It's got, I think, 27 pellets in there. So I'm hoping a few catch it. I am shooting blind because I don't have my contacts in, but I don't trust regular glasses for, for protecting my eyes. But let's... Let's try this out. <laughs> I don't know if I hit it or I hit under it. I'm going to have to take a look. Oh, oh no! Oh, we killed it. Man, I was hoping. I really wanted it to survive, but I really wasn't expecting it. it looks like looks like two pellets caught the edge there and took out the, the side of the battery. Eh, that's a little toxic. I'm going to need to get some gloves, and I'm, that's going to ride in the back on the way home. After picking it up, I realized that Buckshot hit it more solidly than I first thought. This was not a realistic test, but you can't tell me it's not fun shooting stuff until it breaks, and I'm impressed that both Poseidons in this video handle as much abuse as they did. Hey, sweet boy. You gonna help me make a video? I think it's a, a reasonable question to ask. Do you really need a ruggedized device charger when you're doing all these rugged kind of activities? Do you want to stay plugged in? And the truth is a lot of us do. Whether it's because I like to update Instagram and Facebook showing people what I'm doing, showing viewers what I'm doing when I'm out in the boonies, but it's also a way I keep my cameras charged. Not all of the cameras that I use have swappable batteries. I need to plug them into something and this provides that power. My daughter also wears a continuous glucose monitor. She's got type one diabetes and I have to recharge that every two days and make sure that it keeps working. Having a device charger is really important when I don't think I'm gonna be around a power outlet for more than two days. But having one that's ruggedized gives me extra peace of mind because I know just simple bobbling uh, that you can do with a device charger like this, it's not gonna break, it just, it's just not gonna break. But if you're doing even rougher activities, waterborne activities, that kind of thing, the dark energy Poseidon is going to make sure that you have power when you need it. I have a discount code to, that works with the link that I have provided below. You have to order it through the link below. I think it's an Amazon store, but I got the details in the video description. These normally retail for $99 and you can get them for $90 each using the discount code below. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at twang and bang. You can see the link uh, below me right now. Be sure to click right here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool stuff. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang. And I hope to see you next time.